What's up everybody? This is Chris here from East Coast PC and welcome back to the channel. Before we get started, please make sure everybody gets subscribed, hit that like button, comment, do all that good YouTube stuff. You don't know how much it helps us out. We greatly appreciate all the support that we've already had, all the subscribers, everybody that's viewed all of our videos. Thank each and every one of y'all so much for all of y'all support. Now today we have the Asus X570 Dark Hero motherboard. We're going to take it out of the box here and I'm going to go over all the new features of uh, this Dark Hero over the original X570 Asus Hero and why I think it's going to be one of the best X570 motherboards that probably will ever be made. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, y'all. So this is the new Asus X570 Dark Hero motherboard. I think it is a wonderful looking motherboard and I think it is a great take on the original Asus X570 Hero motherboard. Now first we are going to talk about the three main features that the upgrades that this came with over the original uh, X570 Hero motherboard. So the first main feature is it still has a 14 plus two phase VRM. But instead of having 60 amp power stages, we now have 90 amp power stages. So again, it's 14 plus two phases, two for the memory, 14 for the V-Core. So now we have 90 amps per power stage instead of 60. And that is going to give it a lot more overclocking headroom. And it'll also help out a lot with thermal uh thermals in general. You know, even if the 60 amps of the previous motherboard would have handled the new 55, 5950X pushed to its limits. It is greatly appreciated to have the higher amp power stages because all it can do is help keep your temperatures lower than they already would have been with the previous setup. So that is, you know, very welcome and I'm very excited to start overclocking with this thing. The second feature and probably the most important uh, feature of why I bought this motherboard is uh, their new ASUS DOS overclocking. Now, it is stands for ASUS Direct Overclock Switching. So what that does is it basically helps out with some of the disadvantages that all of Ryzen overclockers have been facing for many, many years now. So for many years, uh, if you wanted to overclock your nice Ryzen processor, there was basically no chance on most of the higher end processors anyway that you could get the all core overclock to even close to the single core turbo frequency. So what that meant was it, instead of using PBO, if you wanted to use a static all core overclock, what would happen is if, if the CPU like the 3950X, for example, came with uh, from last generation, came with a 4.7 gigahertz single core turbo frequency. So if the highest we could get that processor overclock to was about 4.4 gigahertz on all 16 cores, and we went that route, well, then we would lose 300 megahertz of performance when we were only on one core, and sometimes it, it would still boost pretty high with you know two or three cores. But we would lose all of that extra performance. So a lot of the people in the industry came to the conclusion that with Ryzen, it's better to just put a very good cooler on and put uh, use Precision Boost Overdrive. And, and Precision Boost Overdrive is great. That's what you still want to use with this ASUS DOS overclocking. But what we can do now is we can still use uh, uh, all-core overclock and the PBO high boost frequencies in conjunction with each other. So now all we have to do is turn on PBO with this motherboard, and then you go in and set your all-core overclock. If you know you can uh, handle a 4.65 or 4.7 gigahertz all-core overclock with this motherboard, then what we're going to do, we're going to go in hardware info, and we're going to basically use a program to load up the cores one by one. And when we see it drop below 4.7 gigahertz, that's the amps that we're going to put into BIOS that we want ASUS DOS overclocking to switch over at. So anything below that amp, it's going to boost to 4.9 or possibly even higher than 5 gigahertz with, our, with my custom loop water cooling. And anything higher than, than the selected amps that I select, it's going to switch over it instantaneously to the all core overclock. So you're getting the best of both worlds and it is a huge game changer 
for rising overclocking and I really don't think a lot of people have been talking enough people have been talking about it when I heard about it I was just absolutely ecstatic I can't wait to show it to each and every one of you I can't wait to do all kinds of fun stuff with it um, now the next feature of this motherboard is that it does not have a cooling fan uh, you might notice right here it's a really pretty looking heat sink over the chipset and almost basically every x570 motherboard except for i think one engineering sample that i've seen has a chipset cooling fan a lot of people complained about it it puts off a little bit of noise not definitely not enough to bother me but it is an extra moving part that can uh that can tear up so it's definitely nice not to have that cooling fan and uh, there's actually one more feature uh, of this motherboard. I said the three main new features, but there's one more feature that it has an advantage over all the other X570 boards. And that is, it is rising 5000 ready out of the box. This board does not need a BIOS update. It is ready for all the new Ryzen 5000 processors right out of the box. So this and one other B550 motherboard that Asus made uh, along when they launched this is, by the way, don't buy this extremely overpriced and I highly recommend everybody stay away from that motherboard. I think it's a complete ripoff, even though I think this is probably the best motherboard that uh, has been, ever been made for X570 in my opinion, just partially bef because of the DOS overclocking alone. But not having that chipset uh, fan is definitely a plus. So we've went over all the new features now, y'all. So without further to talk about here, we're gonna go over all the other features that this board has to offer. All right, y'all, so for all the other features of this motherboard, we're gonna start at the back at the IO panel, and we have a fully loaded panel, all content creators, overclockers, just about any kind of game or content creator overclocker. This motherboard really ticks just about every box you can possibly tick. Uh, there's not many downsides. So for in USB inputs, we have four USB 3.0s, five gigabits per second ports, and then we have eight USB 3.1 10 gigabit per second ports. Now seven of them are type A, and then we have one type C. That's 10 gigabits per second for a total of eight 10 gigabits per second uh, USB 3.1 ports. Now we also have a 2.5 gig LAN. We have a one gig LAN. We have Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.1. We have 7.1 channel audio here at the bottom along with a optical audio out. And then also at the top here, we have a BIOS flashback button and we also have a clear CMOS button right beside it. So that back panel was another feature that I was extremely excited about. It. I loved having all of them USB, for, USB ports. They're all high speed ports. None of them are USB 2.0 whatsoever. So we are fully loaded on that front. So now we're gonna start talking about all the great features of the motherboard, the standard features that we hadn't already talked about. So for our EPS CPU power, we have one standard 8-pin, and then we also have a 4-pin EPS as supplementary power. I always advise to plug that in if it's there, even if you're not going to pull a terrible amount of power through it. You'll hear a lot of people online say, well, you don't need one but one 8-pin, and a lot of motherboards will work with just the one 8-pin, but by putting this uh, extra 4 hooking this extra four pin EPS up, what that does is that's gonna take some of the heat off of that eight pin cable. It's just gonna distribute your power and heat through another cable and, instead of just one cable. And, and that goes for graphics cards too. It's always good to plug all of them up. It just takes less power and heat through each one of them. So uh, as far as uh, connectivity otherwise on this motherboard, we for PCI Express slots, we have the one 16 uh, slot right here at the top. That is every slot and every M.2 connector is PCI Express 4.0, by the way. Uh, but we have the by 16 slot right here that's uh, generally made for your graphics card. It's definitely what you're going to want to put a single graphics card in. And then we have this second slot right here. Now, the second slot is a by 8 slot. It is tied in with the first slot. So when you connect uh, anything to this, the second PCI Express, express slot right here it is going to uh cut your top slot to eight lanes so you're going to have eight lanes in the top slot and eight lanes in the second slot now the next slot is that is a pci express 4.0 by one slot but it does have the end of it cut open so there is a lot of devices that you like pci express 
by four devices that you could stick in there because they've cut the end of it out. So if there's enough, if you can get enough bandwidth through one PCI Express 4.0 lane to make that device work, you can do that. And I love that ASUS left that open and gave us that option. And finally at the bottom, we have a PCI Express 4.0 by 16 slot but it is only wired by four it's only wired for four lanes so no matter what you will only get four lanes there at the bottom and and the, and the pci express 4.0 by four at the very bottom that we're talking about and the one i just talked about the pci express 4.0 by one both of them come directly from the chipset they are not tied in directly from the cpu no way they are they are chipset lanes now the one of the only drawbacks of this motherboard is that it only has two M.2 slots. Now, I would have liked to seen a third slot, but I'm about to tell you a little bit more about why it only has two slots. So there's only a certain amount of bandwidth that is available on any chipset, Intel, AMD, all of it. Well, a lot of the motherboard, basically all of the motherboards that have three X570 boards that have three M.2 slots, if you can plug everything in on the motherboard without anything cutting out, then most of them only have four SATA 6 gig ports and a lot of them only have uh, not nearly as many USB ports on the back as this one does and if they do have eight or ten USB ports some of them usually are USB 2.0s. Um, so what ASUS has decided to do they have decided to give us a fully loaded and stacked uh, rear I.O. port that we just looked at. The only thing that's possibly that anybody could complain about is a USB 3.2 gen 2 by 2 which is 20 gigabits per second most of the time in a usb form i mean usb c form factor that's about the only thing anybody could complain about back here so we have all of them ports we have two m.2 slots the first one is connected directly to the cpu the second one is you're getting them four lanes from the chipset so you can have both of them m.2 uh slots plugged in you can have the pci four at the bottom and the PCI one right there. You can have both of those plugged in and all eight SATA ports. We have eight SATA six gig ports and you can have every bit of that plugged up without losing anything. Like in, like on my current motherboard behind me, uh, I have six SATA ports, but I also have three M.2 slots. Well, if I plug up one of the M.2 or the third M.2 slot, I lose two SATA ports. If I plug up uh, something with that uses four lanes in the bottom slot that is wired for four just like on this motherboard I use another two SATA ports so then I only have two SATA ports left so you, you're getting everything everything here you can connect at the same time and use which is absolutely excellent and it makes it a lot easier on uh, new PC builders that don't realize how all of that stuff works uh, so otherwise we have of course four DDR4 DIMM slots this motherboard supports DDR4 memory at a maximum speed of 5100 megahertz. Now that's all going to depend on the CPU, the memory, how how much capacity the sticks are, the ranks, and all of that good stuff. So uh, it does have a great memory VRM and it does give you the ability with a daisy chain memory setup to push some really high memory clocks if that's what you're going for. Or you can go with uh, high speed, low, pretty low latency, high capacity setups as well. Now, for the rest of the connections on this board, I'm going to just go over stuff pretty quickly. So we got a uh, great uh, 7.1 channel audio, as I showed back here. As, as for fan headers, we have eight PWM fan headers. Now, we have three up here at the top. Now that is your CPU fan, your CPU optional, and then you have one dedicated to uh, AIO setup, just like this EVGA 360 uh, AIO, AIO behind me. That is made directly for them. That's that's what you connect your AIOs for. ASUS recognizes that in the BIOS, and it will treat it like an AIO and run it exactly like it's supposed to be run without the end user touching anything. So we have them three, and then we also have uh, two high amp plugs. One is down here in your water cooling zone. Uh, that we have a water flow in and out sensor for the temperature and a tack to tell us how much water we are pumping through our pump. And along beside that is that three amp head header that I just said. So that gives that nice D5 pump or the DDC 3.1 pump, whatever water pump you want to connect to it. It gives it plenty of power and you don't never have to worry about burning a header out. You also have one other three amp fan header and that is to plug uh, a bunch, a lot of fans, daisy chain, a lot of fans to 
or basically any any as many fans as you want uh you can basically run on three amps it'll run nine fans with no problems usually you still want to check the amps and the wattage of the, of each one of them fans but that will give you a lot of amps for a lot of fans along with having your other three amp water cooling uh plug so for usb we have two internal headers for usb 2.0 here at the bottom each one of them are good for two USB 2.0 ports. Uh, up here we have a USB 3.0 internal header that is good for two USB 3.0 ports. And then right here we have, this right here is good for one USB 3.1 10 gigabits per second port. Uh, that's a USB type C. So just like the USB type C port on the front of my Lee and Lee case right there, that is what this connector right here is for. Um, otherwise guys, that basically covers most of the important important stuff on this motherboard. We do have four RG, RGB headers. Two of them are 12 volt and two of them are five volt addressable RGB. You got two up here, one of each, and two down here, one of each. Um, you have, we got the start button, reset switch, all of that good stuff. That is good for uh, overclocking, LN2 overclocking, troubleshooting, and all that good stuff. Another very important feature that I didn't mention is this postcode readout right here. That postcode is so good for troubleshooting. If you happen to hook everything up, your board does not boot. Uh, you don't just have to rely on them four tiny little itty bitty LEDs that you have to get out of magnifying glass to see. You don't have to rely on them in this case. You got a wonderful, nice postcode readout up here. But after uh, all that said, I think we just about covered everything guys um all the important stuff anyway i'm so excited about hooking this thing up and i think it is a absolute excellent motherboard as i've said many times we have our 5950x behind us i got my power supply ordered we are going to be hooking this thing up really soon and we're going to be doing all kinds of that asus dos overclocking we're going to be filming so much of it sharing it with each and every one of y'all so everybody just stay tuned to the channel thank each and every one of y'all for watching this channel i greatly appreciate all the support everything all of my supporters have done so far so please guys if you are not subscribed and you're still watching this video please hit that subscribe button it helps us out so much and please click on that bell and click all so we will you will get notified every time we put out a new video also drop a comment let me know what y'all thought if y'all have any questions about anything we're, we're still a small growing youtube community so i i can still try to i still try to reach out to every Everybody, every single person that has a question at this point if there's any of you that has a question I will do my very best to get to you, get back to you and answer that question to the best of my abilities once again thank everybody and I will see all of y'all soon